Hey guys, sorry for the delay today. So in today's class, we're going to discuss four different types of strategies that can help you in solving reading and writing fill in the blanks from PTE reading section more properly. So let's get started without any further delay. So in today's class, we are going to discuss several tricks and tips that can help you in solving these questions more properly and appropriately. If you have any questions regarding them, you can ask always in the chat uh, and I'll be happy to answer that. So let's get started with our class for today. So, um, in reading section, it's very important that you solve this question quite properly, which is reading and writing, fill in the blanks. So, what happens in this question is basically you get a passage on the screen, uh, something that looks like this, and then you are required to solve the questions by selecting one correct answer from the drop-down menu that is present on the screen. So each drop-down menu will contain four answer options out of which only one answer will be correct. And in exam, you get around five, uh, five to six questions from here. And each blank that you answer correctly will give you one point. And what happens here is that we have integrated scoring system. So uh, the marks from here are always going to go towards your reading, but it is also going to go, uh, going to go towards your writing section as well. So let's just get started with this. Just a second, I need to bring my pen. So just one second. All right, so let's get started with everything now. All, everything is all sorted. So as I said, you get five to six questions in exam from here, and each question might minimum carry two blanks and could maximum carry up to six blanks. So very good amount of points that comes from here towards your reading section. So as I said, the scoring criteria, it gives you one point when you answer the question correctly and zero point when you answer the question incorrectly. So there are some basic approaches that you might want to have a look at whenever you're trying to solve reading and writing fill in the blanks because you are being tested on this uh, criteria. So the first and foremost criteria, it's about grammar, word forms, uh, so it's related to the word form. So when you answer, uh, when you have answer options, right? And all the answer options have the same word, but it has different forms in it. So for example, the same word form is present, uh, sorry, same word is present, but it is present in the form of a noun, verb, adjective, and adverb. Out of that, you have to select out the correct answer. This is a very less popular approach in uh, reading and writing fill in the blanks, but sometimes some questions are focused on this uh, strategy as well. So sometimes you might need to select the correct word form to fit in the grammar of the sentence correctly. Another approach um, in uh, PTE reading and writing fill in the blanks is related to meaning, which is related to the word choices that we make. So um, sometimes um, in the question, there are uh, a lot of words present and all the answers um, or the, all the questions are having same kind of meaning or they are interrelated. So you have to find out the best answer that is matching with the meaning of the sentence. So this approach is quite tricky. I see a lot of students facing issues with this. So we will have a look at it on how to solve those questions properly later on. This is just a brief introduction. So in here, 
what you need to do is basically just understand the context and the meaning of the sentences and that will help you to answer the question quite correctly. We'll look at an example later on. Now another approach is about the context. Now sometimes uh, some of the correct answers they come from the general context or the situation or information that is mentioned in the sentence like something that is present before the sentence or before the blank that will give you an idea what should come in that particular blank or sometimes what are the words present after the uh, blank that could give you an idea about this. So you have to look at the context, the general situation or information present in the sentence to help you answer the questions correctly in here. Another approach and the last approach, which is the most important approach of all, it is about collocations. So collocations are basically the words that we normally use together and they are more uh, sounding like a normal natural phrase. So some words that can go together always could be helpful in helping you to answer the questions correctly as well. So let's have a look at the first approach, um, which is about the meaning or the word choice. So I have a, uh, an example here on the screen. If you look at the answer options, we have a word which is quite related to all the other words as well. So if you look at the answer options, all the four words have kind of a similar kind of meaning. So you need to select a the best word that goes with the meaning of the entire sentence in here. So what would be the correct answer in here? The sentence size, the elder academy uh, scheme, an education and social inclusion initiative was dashed in early 2007 by the Labor and Welfare Bureau and the Elderly Commission. So what would be the answer in here for this particular blank? We are looking at word choices. So some of the answer options, they might have meaning which is quite similar, but only one answer option will go with the meaning of the sentence, which will fit appropriately there in terms of meaning. So was begun in early. And remember the, here the meaning that you have to look is related to the scheme. So it is about the elder academy scheme and it says was dash in early 2007 by the Labor and Welfare Bureau. So was something, so obviously the, all the answer options are verbs, right? So you need to select the best answer. And if you know the answer here, please post your answers in the comments so I can check if you're doing it correctly or not. All right, so here it says was begun in. So scheme can scheme begun, but was begun doesn't make sense there. So it can't be our correct answer. Now, if you look at the word originated, so can scheme originated uh, originate in early 2007? Is it making any sense? No, it's not making sense with the meaning of the sentence, right? And scheme can't be inaugurated as well. So scheme will be launched. Good work, Abarnath, Mohammed. good work. So the first answer in this case would be launched. So was launched, the scheme was launched. Whenever you get a sentence and you always find like some information between two commas, remember that is an extra phase, a phrase that is present to give some extra information. So sometimes if you just omit that information out and read what is there from here till here, it will always be in connection. So that can help you to uh, minimize the, con you know, the passage and focus on the grammar and the meaning of the sentence more appropriately. So good work, guys. So the Elder Academy scheme was launched in early 2007 by the Labor and Welfare Bureau and the Elderly Commission. So whenever you get a question in which you have a lot of words and 
all the words have similar kind of meaning, in that case, ask yourself about the meaning. That which word is going with the meaning and sounds more appropriate. And that will help you to answer the question properly. Let's have a look at the next approach now. So the second approach that we talked about is related to the context. So sometimes in some situations, you might need to use the situations or the clues that are present in the sentence, either before the blank or either after the blank to help you find the correct answer. So let's have a look at the example now. It says the scheme optimizes the use of existing educational facilities and has been successful in promoting both lifelong and initial learning for older people, encouraging participation and helping to maintain dash and mental well-being. So it's, it's talking about the scheme and it says that the use of existing educational facilities and they have been helpful in promoting lifelong and initial learning for whom? For all elder people. And it says encouraging participation. So it is helping in encouraging participation and helping to maintain something. Now, if you look at the blank, uh, you know, the things that are present after the blank, we have end. Right. So sometimes, uh, you know, in the passage, you might find words like end or also or but. So if you see end, we always use it to add additional information. So something that is present after end might be correlated to the something that is present before end. So might be similar. And if you look at the word present here, it's, it's mental. So uh, here we are talking about an adjective. So some other adjective should also come in here. So something that is interrelated. And I see all the answers are coming up here. Uh, good work, Amarnath, Umer, Jenam, Ashish. Very good. So the correct answer in this case is physical. Maintain physical and mental well-being. So this approach is called as context approach in which you use the meaning, information present in the sentence either before the blank or after the blank to help you find the correct answer. I hope that's clear enough. Uh, let's move to the third strategy. Now, the third strategy here, it's about the word forms. So whenever you're looking at the sentences and you see that all the answer options belong to the same word family. So here, basically, the main word is evolve or evolution. So evolution in this case is a noun. Any word that is ending with T-I-O-N, remember guys, it's always a noun. Then here we have something that is ending with A-R-Y. Anything that is ending with A-R-Y, it is always an adjective. Oops, sorry guys, just need to... Uh... Put my charger on, just give me one second. I'll be back in a while. All right, sorry for that disturbance there. So if the question was about context uh, and it's about the grammar, so you have to use different word forms and find out the correct word form that is correct grammatical word that will fill up this particular blank. And we were talking about the ending N-A-R-Y, which is related to adjectives, evolving and evolve. If you look at the sentence here, we have the word is and most of the times after is we use verb right so 
what would be that particular verb in this case so is evolution doesn't make sense is evolutionary could be or is evolving could be or is evolve what do you think would be the correct answer in here now the sentence says the stock of australia's dwelling is dash with current homes having more bedrooms on an average than homes 10 years ago and i see correct answer from amarnath good work so the correct answer would be in this case be evolving so is evolving with current homes now if you look at the context here it says current homes have more bedrooms and they give a comparison to what was there in the past 10 years ago so the thing we are talking about is an evolution from the certain point in the past to the present time so the correct answer in this case would be evolving all right good work guys good work Omer, Janam. well done good work Muhammad. now you got it right all right let's talk about the fourth approach which is the last approach for reading and writing fill in the blanks and the most important one i'll also give you some tips uh, on how to uh, you know understand and learn different collocations after we talk about the strategy so collocations are basically the words that always go together one of my students said that they are couple words they always go together so if you want to remember the meaning of collocation remember couple words so they always go together okay and whenever we talk about pte academic uh, test so the nature of the test is academic so you need to learn the collocations which are academic in nature and if you uh, see pearson has already released um, some 2400 something were you know collocations so if you want to download that collocation or if you want me to send it uh, you can join our telegram group or whatsapp group i'll post the link in the description once the session is over so if you want to join our telegram group you can join there or if you want to join uh, my whatsapp group just uh, text me on my number that is present on the lower part of the screen and just say i want to join whatsapp group and i'll be happy to pass you the link so let's talk about collocation uh, and the question in here so here it says a literature search was performed to determine whether non-steroid uh, steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs adversely dash the healing of stress fractures so here we have an adverb most of the words that is that are ending with ly they are most of the times adverbs but again some of the adjectives also end with ly so there are some exceptions uh, but let's have a look at uh, the sentence here so adversely dash so if you look at the answer options all the answer options are in verb form now one word would go with the word adversely and others might not so what would be your answer in this particular case so adversely result the healing of stress fracture is it making sense no adversely rely the healing of stress fractures again not making sense adversely continue the healing again not making sense so the correct answer in here would be adversely affect the healing of the stress fractures so this combination is basically um, a collocation about adverb plus verb 
So there are different types of collocations present in English and we will talk about them now so you can get an idea. Now, uh, whenever we are talking about collocations, we are again talking about the combi different combinations of word forms. Now, I hope you remember we were talking about word forms previously as well. And I have discussed this thing in more detail. If you want to have a look, have a look at my uh, video about the strategies for reading and uh, reading fill in the blanks from for the PTE reading section. There we have discussed about what are the word forms and how you can identify different word forms quite easily. So that will help you in finding the correct answers for this one. So um, word forms basically are different form of words that are present in English, such as nouns, verbs, um, adverbs, and adjectives. So these are the different types of words that are present in English and different combinations they make could help you find different types of collocations. Let's have a look at the first example in here. So um, the first one is a combination of adjective and a noun. Adjectives are basically the words that gives us more information about a noun. So um, for example, if I say he is a person. Um, he is a he is a man. Okay, what kind of man? He is an intelligent man. He is a young man. He is a tall man. So the words like intelligent, tall, young, all of those are adjectives. They give us the quality, or sometimes they modify the noun. So here we have some examples uh, since the nature of the test is academic. So we're going to look at some examples related to academic collocations. So the first uh, concept in here is about abstract, which is an adjective. And it's followed by the noun that is concept. So again, an adjective followed by a noun combination. Um, I think you might not be able to see this word, so I'll just write it down here. Achievement. So the word academic, um, it's related to a lot of different types of combinations like academic studies, academic collocations, academic um, result, um, academic achievement. So these are combinations of adjectives followed by a noun. Then the second type of category is related to the verbs followed by a noun. So for example, people talk a lot that he achieved his goal. So achieve a goal, right? In here we have an extra article in between. So it's always used together. So that's what we have put there. But it's a combination of a verb followed by a noun. That is a goal or accept responsibility. So again, a combination of a verb and a noun. Another type of uh, collocation is related to adverbs followed by adjectives. So sometimes adverbs, uh, they not only modify the verb, sometimes adverbs modify adverbs themselves, or sometimes adverbs also modify the adjectives. So that's why we have the third type of collocation. It's related to adverbs plus adjectives. Now, words like um, acutely aware or almost identical or are broadly similar, they are a combination of adverbs and adjectives. The next category is about adverbs followed by verbs. As I said, adverbs has three functions. They modify verbs. They modify adjectives themselves, uh, sorry, adjectives, and they modify adverbs themselves as well. So in this case, um, we have the third, uh, second type of rule, which is about the adverbs followed by the verbs. So for example, adversely affect. We just had a look about uh, this example in one particular blank. They are always used together. Briefly describe something, briefly discuss something. So they are the different type of um, combinations that we might find for the adverb followed by the verb. 
One more type of uh, uh, collocation related to adverb is about adverbs followed by the past participles. So past participles are basically the third form of the verb. So verb exists in several different forms, v1, v2, v3. So simple uh, verb, then uh, past participle, simple past, past participle. So three different types of categories in terms of that. And most of the times past participle ends with ed, n, e, n, etc. So, yeah, so um, for example, be actively involved. Um, now, again, this actively involved, um, it might collocate with the preposition in, be actively involved in something, right? So, uh, yeah, if you had a gap, for example, let's say, be actively dash in, so be actively involved in. So you can get an idea like that whenever you're trying to solve fill in the blanks. Um, be best described as something. Another type of collocation is about the nouns followed by nouns. So uh, whenever you want to have a look at nouns, like for example, uh, background knowledge, it's a, uh, both the words are a noun in here. Assessment process, again, both the words are noun here. And the next category is about verbs followed by an adjective. So become apparent, become available. So it's a combination of verb followed by an adjective. And the last type of collocation that you'll find here is about verbs followed by adverbs. So, for example, behave differently, apply equally. So, it's a combination of verb, which is followed by an adverb. So, I hope um, you will be able to learn the collocations quite well. Just understand the different type of word forms and how they are used together. I would recommend using and studying. You don't have to memorize the a collocation list provided by Pearson. But I would surely recommend that you at least go through the, um, you know, academic collocation list so that um, you know what are the different words that are normally used together. And if you don't know how to use, you know, read and um, go through the academic collocation list, let me know uh, in our Telegram group uh, or on our WhatsApp group. I'll give you an idea how you can do that. So, yeah. Now, talking about as a strategy overall for the reading and writing fill in the blanks. So first, you have to make sure that you use your knowledge of collocation and grammar to help you guess or predict the word or the type of word that best fits each blank. So you have to understand the meaning of the sentences. Sometimes you might be able to apply your knowledge of collocation. Sometimes you might be able to use your grammar knowledge to help you identify the correct answer. My suggestion, always read the sentence first before looking at the answer options. Just try to predict or guess the correct word that what would be the per, uh, you know word that could fit in that blank and then have a look at the answer options and you'll always get a very good idea what you're looking for and will help you to find the correct answers. Again, another thing that you can do is to reject the options that you know are not appropriate in terms of meaning or in terms of grammatical context. So sometimes when you look at the answer options, Right. And uh, you see that some words are not going with the meaning or are not co collocating or are not set fitting in terms of the context. Then you just eliminate those answer options. And let's say if you're confused between two answer options, which most of the time happens in exam, then put that two words one by one in that particular blank and read the sentence to yourself and listen to how it sounds. It's quite important that you listen to it because if you listen to it, your knowledge of collocation will be activated and see that which one sounds best 
and which one gives the meaning of the sentence accurately and sa is sounding best. So that is going to help you in finding the correct answer in, in case if you're confused between two answer options. And this strategy always works. But remember, try to guess or predict the word before looking at the answer options and always read all the sentences. Even if you just came through them, always read all the sentences. I see a lot of students, you know, they skip the sentences because the passages are too long. They just skip the sentences. Don't do that. So sometimes you might need some context to help you answer that particular question and you have already skipped that sentence. So it could, uh, you know, result in selecting selection of a wrong answer. So never try to do that. One simple uh, thing that you always need to do is just make sure, let's say, uh, if you have a sentence here, uh, right? If you have a sentence here and then there is one blank. I see uh, people stop at this place and then they just look at the answer options. Don't do that. Finish reading the entire sentence till full stop first because who knows if, uh, the knowledge that you might need or the clues that you might need must might be present after the blank. So always read the sentence fully. Try to predict what could be the answer and then look at the answer options and find out which one is the best answer for that particular word. And if you want, you can um, eliminate the answer options if you, you think they are inappropriate or are not fitting in terms of the meaning or the grammar. In that case, you can always, um, you know, eliminate the wrong answers. And if you're confused, just, you know, do the same thing. Put one by one each word in the sentence and read the sentence to yourself and listen to how it sounds and choose the option that sounds best in the sentence and gives the meaning of the sentence. Some common mistakes that students also make uh, when doing reading and writing fill in the blanks. It's, it's also related to, uh, you know, um, selection of the words. Sometimes they just don't look at the meaning of the sentence. They just look at the collocation. Oh, this word is fitting correctly in terms of collocation. But it might not fit in terms of the context. So always try to understand the meaning of the sentences as well, guys. It's very important because it's not only testing your writing, but it's also testing your reading skills. So you need to be able to understand the context and the meaning of the sentences. So those were some tips that can help you in solving reading and writing fill in the blanks. And if you are facing any type of problems in terms of uh, not finding the correct answer or uh, if you don't know what's the correct answer, you can always comment in the videos. I'm always there to help answer the questions. So yeah, that would help. And now let's solve some of the questions from the test. So let's get started. Uh, this is the first question for today. It's related to Lucy. So as I said, the first step is to read the sentences. In here, you don't need to read the entire passage. Sometimes you might find yourself stuck in the middle of the sentence. Oh, I don't know what should be the correct answer or appropriate answer for that particular blank. Don't get stuck at that particular blank. Leave that blank for that particular moment and try to solve the next blank and the other blanks present in the same question. When you're done with the last question or the last blank of that particular question, come to the first blank. By that time, you will have appropriate idea about the context, the meaning of the sentences, and that will help you to figure out what would be that particular answer that you might be looking for. So let's solve the first question now, guys. So it says, Lucy was a single hominid skeleton found in Ethiopia. First, she was a bunch of broken fragments lying in Ethiopia. So we are talking about Lucy here, and she is a hominoid skeleton, uh, and it was found in Ethiopia. Then it says, she was found by Donald Johansson and Tom Gray, who headed out to the area looking for rocks and then drove back. So we are talking about 
two people who were able to find that particular skeleton so this kind of things they should go in your mind whenever you are trying to solve reading fill in the blanks read the sentences understand the meaning and move to the next sentence so the next sentence says dash that return journey Johansson spotted a forearm bone identified it and then kept looking where the two found a huge set of bones that would eventually dash 40% of the entire skeleton. So here for this particular blank we see that answer options have all the prepositions in here but which one is fitting in terms of the context correctly right so you have to look at the different types of uh, prepositions so here it says that that return journey so we are talking about return journey and what happened at that time so it says Johansson spotted some forearm bone right so it's a, a process of uh, actions that are happening uh, in that uh, journey written journey so the correct answer in this case would be what can we say in that written journey is it making sense or after that journey did the actions happen after that journey did the actions after uh, uh, you know uh, actions happened among that journey or did those actions happened during that journey which one sounds better guys you can post your answers in the comments so I can check how you're doing with that. Good work, guys. Good work, Amarnath. So if the correct answer in this case is during that journey. Okay, so this one is our answer. During that journey, something happened. Let's have a look at the next blank. It says that would eventually dash 40% of the entire skeleton so that would eventually excluding doesn't make sense so I'll eliminate that that would eventually exclude 40% could be that would eventually representing 40% again not making sense in terms of grammar so now I'm confused between two words, represent and exclude. And if I look at the meaning of the sentence, we're talking about um, different set of bones that were found, right? Uh, by the two scientists. So what would be the correct answer in here, guys? I want to see. Good work, Yadav. Good work. Yep. So the correct answer in this case would be eventually represent 40% of the entire skeleton we are not talking about exclusion in here so that will not go with the meaning so the best word which will go in here would be represent very good Ati good work now let's have a look at the next question guys so it's again from the real exam let's try to solve this question as well so it says dna is a molecule that does two things first it acts as the dash material which is passed down from one generation to the ge from generation to generation right so it's passed down from one generation to another generation that's what it is talking about so it is acting as what kind of material um, just a second. I think you guys are not able to see the screen properly. Just a second. Let me try to fix this one a little bit. Should be fine now. So it says first it acts as the dash material which is passed down from generation to generation. Let's have a look at the answer options. Uh, so it acts as functional material, it's, it acts as hereditary material, it acts as usual material, it acts as metabolic material. What kind of materi material, right? So here we have a combination of um, an adjective plus uh, 
noun material is a noun so what type of material we are looking for good work at the good work sneha so the correct answer in this case is harry d tree material very good guys now let's have a look at the second sentence it says second it directs to a considerable extent the construction of our bodies telling ourselves what kind of molecules to make and dash our development from a single cell zygote to a fully formed adult so what would be the answer in here before trying to look at the answer options always try to predict what it would be so maybe we need a verb with ing in here and it's talking about the process that how it helps to create a fully formed adult from what a single cell zygote so a single cell zygote it is converted into a fully formed adult right so that's what we are talking about so what would be the answer in here good work sneha good work amarnath i see you guys are able to understand the context quite well good work so the correct answer in here it can't be establishing our development we can't establish the development right uh, those two words don't go with each other pushing our development could be but in terms of meaning and the context it can't be and if you look at abiding again it is not making sense so the correct answer in this case would be guiding good work good work at me so let's have a look at the third one it says these two things are of course dash so which things so the first thing mentioned here and the second thing mentioned here so what are they are of course dash of course required of course tested of course constructed or of course connected Good work guys. I'll still give you a few more seconds so I can see how you guys are doing with this. Very good. So the correct answer for this one would be connected. So they, these two things, they are connected to each other. Good work, Sneha, Ati, very good guys, and Amanat as well. Good work. So our third answer is connected. Let's have a look at the next sentence. It says, uh, the DNA sequence that construct the best bodies are like, more likely to get passed down the to the next generation because well constructed bodies are more likely to survive and dash to reproduce so and dash to reproduce if you look at the answer options we are talking about connectors right so what do you think would be the appropriate connector that would you know connect these two phrases together Good work. I think Amarnath and Sneha are running ahead of me. Okay, so the correct answer in this case would be, let's talk about the words that won't go with the meaning, right? So let's have a look at the elimination method first. So it says construct best bodies are more likely to pass down to generation and well constructed bodies are more likely to survive so if the bodies are well constructed they are likely to more survive and therefore they can reproduce so nevertheless is not going with the meaning however is again not going with the meaning we are not looking at opposite information in here so they both are eliminated 
for example reproduce we are not talking about any example here in this case as well so again eliminated so the correct answer in this case would be thus good work Gita Yadav happy very very well done good work let's solve the last question for today's class now guys so here it says interior design is a professionally conducted practice-based process of planning and realization of interior spaces and the elements within so we are talking about interior design in here and it says then interior design is dash with function and operation of the aesthetics and it's dash so we have two blanks in here in this question so let's have a look at the first blank uh, it says um, interior design right is dash with the function so here we have a preposition with so remember whatever word that you select for this particular place it should go and collocate with that preposition present there so with something so which word that goes with that particular thing so is concerned with the function is correlated with is concentrated with or is corresponded with I can say that quickly you know if, um, the concentrated is not going with the meaning neither going with the grammar corresponded is again not going with the meaning nor with the grammar now I'm confused uh, what, what should I pick here is, is should it be concerned or correlated and I remember correlated always collocates with the preposition to correlated to something most of the times and if you look at the meaning of this sentence it says that interior design is dash with the function and operation of the aesthetic so it, it is talking about two things the function and the operation of the aesthetic so it's concerned with something right so it's concerned with function and operation of the aesthetic so the correct answer in here would be concerned and not correlated if we always say it's correlated to something we rarely use correlated with something i've never seen that so yeah the correct answer in this case would be concerned good work amarnath a little bit work guys Gita, sneha yadav a little work okay uh, let's have a look at the next blank it says and it's dash so and it's what so if you look at here it, it, we had a blank uh, you know info some information about interior design before the sentence it said um, it is professionally conducted and it is practice based process of planning as well as realization of the interior spaces and the elements that are present within that particular part so what would be the answer in here it's capacity it's environment it's sustainability or it's reality which word will go with the meaning in here so you're going to use the context in this particular case to find out the correct answer so the correct answer for this particular case would be very good guys sustainability well done Ati, Sneha and Sushant good work So the second answer would be sustainability and let's look at the last blank for today's session it says the work of an interior designer draws upon many other dash such as environmental psychology architecture product design and aesthetics 
in relation to a wide range of building spaces including hotels corporate hotel corporate uh, public spaces schools hospitals etc so environmental psychology architecture product design aesthetics what are these kind of things are the subjects are the principles are the functions or are the disciplines so yes um, good work here I see the correct answers so if the correct answer for this one would be disciplines good work Sneha, Ati, Amanath very good keep it up guys so if the third answer is disciplines so the work of an interior designer draws up on many other disciplines and the thing that helped you to answer this question was the context present after the blank so if you had to read the entire blank to find your answer you can't just you know close your eyes and select the answers just because the words are collocating Good work guys, well done everyone. So I guess that will be it for today's class. And yes, in case if you're struggling with um, the reading section or any other section and you want to get some coaching, um, if you want to join group classes or personal one-to-one -one classes, you can also contact me on the number present in the lower part of the screen. And I'll be happy to answer and help you with whatever you you want so um, that will be it for today's class guys and probably next friday or thursday i'm planning one right from dictation uh, strategy class so we will talk about several gram grammatical aspects uh, that are related to right from dictation so that can help you to solve more questions correctly till then don't forget to subscribe my channel and hit the bell icon so that you don't miss any updates Thank you guys and see you in the next class. Thanks everyone.